Hello everybody and welcome. Wait, hold on. Something's not right. All right, much better. Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm gonna be doing a brief overview of the new Unity Physics Package as well as the Unity Havoc Physics Package. This is another video which is part of my series where I'm going over all the Unity ECS and DOTS sample projects. So now I start getting into the physics samples. And so this is just the first of those videos where again, I'm gonna be just giving you a very brief introduction into the physics systems and some of the basic settings. Now, if you're already quite familiar with the traditional Unity physics, like with colliders and rigid bodies and things along those lines, then you're probably gonna already know most of the things in today's video. But um, I do just wanna show you it to give you a little bit of a refresher to kind of remind you of what is possible, as well as where some of all the new settings sit within the new physics packages. But before I get into it, I'd just like to say that I'm currently working on building up my Discord community. So feel free to use the link down in the description to join that. I'm especially looking for uh, people who are interested in ECS and DOTS. And if you're watching this video, chances are you might fall into that category. So definitely go ahead and join there. I'm trying to build up a nice community of developers so we can all kind of just hang out and ask questions about ECS and kind of help us all improve our skills on all that. Also be sure to like this video if you found it helpful. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on Unity Dots and ECS. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those down in the comment section below. All right, so anyways, let's jump out of play mode here. And I'm just in the Unity Physics samples. I'm under the Hello World folder and then have the Hello World scene here. All right, so first I'm just going to kind of demonstrate the basic setup of making a physics object in Unity with the new physics system. So of course we uh, just selected this E here and you'll see that there are a couple main components on here. Of course, because we're using ECS, you're gonna to wanna to have a convert to entity script and you'll notice this is set to convert and destroy. And then the other two main things that we're gonna to wanna to have are a physics body and a physics shape. So a physics shape is essentially equivalent to the collider and you can see kind of the uh, green outline of the collider here. So currently we have set the shape type to convex hole. So this is basically where we can kind of control the shape of the collider. Convex hole is basically just kind of a wrapper on the mesh. If we want, we could select mesh and it would take the actual mesh data. And so you'll see that this is now outlining exactly the mesh of this E character here. However, we can just set this to convex hole because it's a little bit more performant and um, it's adequate for our needs right now. Of course, if we want, we could also change this to like a sphere or a box collider. Um, but again, we'll just leave it at convex hole. So again, this is equivalent to a collider, but instead of having different types of collider components for like a sphere collider or a box collider, we just have this one physics shape component. And here we can set the uh, exact shape type. Now with these other values, you can kind of mess around with these yourself. Um, I will be going into some of these in future videos. So for now you can kind of just play around and experiment with them. Now the other main component that we have, of course, is the physics body component. And the physics body component is basically the equivalent of a rigid body in traditional Unity physics. And of course, we've set this to motion type of dynamic. I will be going into the other ones later in the video. And of course, here's where we can set um, a bunch of different values. Again, we're gonna be going into these in future videos. But that's essentially the basics of creating a, an actual component. Now I just kind of want to go over some of the global scene settings here. So in this particular demo, we have this uh, physics scene basic elements, and then we have this physics settings game object. Now this isn't actually required. You don't need to have this physics settings game object. The physics works totally fine without it. Um, but here we can kind of control some of the global variables. So of course we just have this physics debug display, and then when I hit play, you'll see that we have this uh, draw collider edges selected. And this basically just kind of gives us a visual representation of the collider edges. Again, because we're using whole colliders, you can see how they kind of wrap around these different objects like that. But you'll see that we also have this physics step component. And this is where we actually can change the simulation type between using Unity physics, no physics, 
or havoc physics. So of course, setting it to no physics means there's gonna be no physics interactions happening. It's not gonna be simulating any physics. And then Unity Physics and Havoc Physics, if you can, you can switch between them and you'll notice that there will be some different behavior between the two. Just for the beginning, I took out the Y component of the gravity, but I can just paste that back in there. So now let's show you what happens when we hit play now that we actually have gravity. So you'll see that the, you know, basically all the objects fall down and it says, hello, everybody, because we lost the Y. And we can change this over to Havoc Physics. By the way, if you do want to set the simulation type to Havoc Physics, you just need to go up to the package manager and include the Havoc Physics package. So now if we hit play, you can see again, everything drops, um, doesn't look too much different, but some of these future demos, when we switch the simulation type between Unity and Havoc Physics, you will notice a difference. And of course our physics settings also has a convert to entity game object. Um, the one other thing that it has that I kind of jumped over is this mouse pick behavior script. Basically what that allows us to do is when we hit play, we can use the mouse to uh, kind of throw around all these different little physics bodies. So again, this is just, you know, our basic little introduction scene where we can kind of just start messing around with the physics a little bit and you'll see how things kind of interact. All right, so the next scene is under this uh, number two folder and this is the Collider Parade Basic. And in this scene, we basically show off the different types of colliders we can have. So we have a sphere collider, a cube collider, a capsule collider, a cylinder collider, a convex hole, and then a mesh collider. And so now if we hit play, you'll see that basically everything just drops down to the floor, just like that. So then again, you can just go to each of these objects. So you see, for example, the sphere is set to a shape type of spear. Uh, cube, we have a box collider. Capsule is a capsule collider. Cylinder is a cylinder collider. Convex is a convex hole. The one that says mesh, no, it says that because it's a shape type of mesh and we have custom mesh, no. So basically what that means here is we can put in any kind of mesh that we want. So if we go to this selection one and uh, we go to do this say like chassis, okay, you'll see that when it updates, we actually have now a car chassis used as the collider. So you'll see that the mesh is set to Suzanne. So that's the visual representation of this little monkey head. And then for the physics shape, this is the actual physics collider that's set to this car chassis. So now um, when you hit play, you see that it drops down to the floor and it basically interacts with the physics world as if it were actually this car. Um, so now if we were to say, maybe grab this guy and drop it on here, you'll see that it, it kind of drops on top like it was um, dropping on top of a car. And then the final scene that I'll be going over today is the other Collider Parade. This is the Collider Parade Advanced. And basically what's going on here is it's showing some of the uh, different types of physics bodies that we can have. So for example, here's our first one, which is the Dynamic Monkey. You'll notice the physics shape is a box collider. So when we selected it, we have this whole um, big box around it. Also, if we were to go into the physics body, you'll see that the motion type is set to dynamic. Now moving on to the next one, which is actually this one below, and this is the kinematic monkey. So looking at the physics shape, we have the convex hole set, and you can see what that looks like. Again, it's just kind of like a wrapper around this monkey face mesh. And then under physics body, we have the motion type set to kinematic. The one other thing that we do have is we have this random motion authoring script. And basically what's gonna happen is when we hit play, it's kind of just kind of like randomly move around here. And so just to real quickly pop open this random motion authoring script, you see that we are actually directly setting the velocity of this um, physics component here. So it's not moving it based on the transform, we're actually moving the velocity of the component. However, because it is kinematic, it's not necessarily going to interact with other things in the physics world. So you're gonna see that in just a moment. And then finally, we have the static monkey um, for physics shape. This is set to the mesh, so it's the exact mesh of the monkey and the physics body is set to static. And so that's not gonna move around because it's static. Anyhow, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play here and we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, so you'll notice a couple things happened. So you see the kinematic monkey's moving around and it's still able to kind of push things around, but it's not actually being affected by any other um, physics objects. So again, if we just kind of restart this scene, 
You see when things drop on it, it doesn't, like nothing happens, right? And of course the static monkey is just gonna be statically there. And when things like the monkey, the kinematic monkey go into it, um, it has absolutely no effect on it because it's just a static component. And I kind of skipped over this one right here, but this one's actually an interesting one. This is a compound dynamic monkey. So you'll see that if you go over here, you'll notice there's actually no physics shape on it. There's just a physics body. So this is actually a parent container, um, which does contain the mesh. So that's how we can actually see it, of course, with the mesh renderer. So if you go under it, we have a couple different components. So you see that we have this ears capsule. And so this is literally just a capsule collider that kind of covers its ears here. You'll see that all that's on it is just this shape type of capsule. We have the yaw box, which is just this little box down here for kind of its, its mouth area. And then we actually have a sphere for its head. So you'll see when we select all three of these objects, you can see it's a compound collider composed of three different things. Again, we have the capsule, the box, and the sphere. And so these compound colliders, they're really good to use because these just simple um, colliders, they're really performant. And if we can combine these to make, you know, a good approximation of what exactly we need uh, our colliders for. So again, that's why um, when we press play, we kind of have this interesting behavior of this guy kind of rolls and then ends up landing on this here. And that's because um, again, his head is actually, I guess it's a Suzanne mesh, so I guess it's her head, but um, whatever it is, it's a monkey and it has a sphere for the head collider. So that's why it can kind of roll around like that. So again, if you're making a compound dynamic body, the key is to have the physics body component be on the actual parent object. So this is where you can uh, control some of the values that affect all the child objects. And then on the child objects, all you need is just the physics shape here. And so I'll just hit play one last time. And that's basically going to wrap up today's video. Again, this is just a very basic introduction into the new Unity physics system and Unity Havoc physics system. Of course, in the future videos, I'm gonna be going into more detail on how all the physics systems actually work. Uh, but until then, I do highly encourage that you guys download these sample projects and play around with them yourself. Of course, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. And don't forget to also join the Discord channel where we're going to be discussing all sorts of things about dots and ECS, including stuff that you've seen in today's physics video. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, make sure you leave it a like. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the Unity Data Oriented Technology Stack and Entity Component System. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.